What's going on guys and welcome back to a fresh dandelion green smoothie. You need to try it. It's going to be the best smoothie you've ever had. Trust me, I'm a smoothie expert. Uh, in my opinion. And yeah, that's it. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about horizontal, horizontal partitioning. So to better demonstrate that, I did create a little illustration and I hope you enjoy it. You know, so... Uh, imagine we have an advice booth and we're getting too many customers inside this advice booth. We're just getting too many, right? We're grabbing too many, too many customers going into this, this advice booth. So we decide to split it up and we already talked about, uh, creating instances. All right. This is not, this is nothing different. Now we split up our traffic into these three instances. So that way they're all, um, have, it's not going to be overworked. But the thing about this is that they're all grabbing data records. Okay. These all three of them are, are grabbing data records. So now we need a record keeper. This record keeper is in charge of keeping all the um, track of all the files. So what does, this, what does this record keeper need? It needs a file cabinet to put all the records inside of it. The thing is, even though we split up the instances, the data is so hectic for the record keeper that it can't keep up what's going on. So the record keeper decides to, Hey, uh, we need a better way to do this. So what does he come up with? Well, he gets rid of not, he doesn't get rid of them, but he assigns each, uh, advice or advice booth, a specific, um, range. So the first one is going to handle records from a to K or customers that have names a to K the second one L through P and the third one Q to Z. Now the record keeper could keep track uh, of what it's actually going on. So if someone requests a record, the record keeper could come in here and say, Hey, L through P requested this. So it has to be under L through P. If it was this scenario, he wouldn't know what's going on. So he would just be like, ah, I just got to find it. That's it. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? And this is actually called horizontal partitioning. So in this example, we actually scaled the advice booth, these booth, along the Z axis. The Z axis of the scale cube is about scaling your database. The technique we just deployed is called horizontal partitioning. Horizontal partitioning or sharding, like pe most people like to call it, involves adding more database instances that are each designed to store and provide access to a part of the data, like we showed. Getting rid of these three guys and adding these which are part of the data, right? Each database is called a shard, there are many ways in which your database can be horizontally partitioned. You can horizontal per, horizontally partition your database by customer age, region, zone, random identifiers. There are literally dozens of ways to partition your database. You need to choose the best solution or the best way to do it for your problem. Also, you really don't want to scale your database just because there are some reasons you might, you might want to scale it. Like for instance, there's too much data. So when you have, when you start to over for overflow the disk or memory space, because you're saving and working with too much data. Another reason would be too many write operations than the server can handle. So when your database is doing a lot of work and too much work that then one server can handle. Another one would be when you experience slow performance. And this is strange because it's actually often cheaper to ho host shards than one database. Yeah, I know it's you're, you're like, what? Yeah, it's, it's pretty strange. I know, uh, but it's true. So if you're hosting your own database, you'll want to use their tools and patterns for implementing uh, horizontal partitioning. Let me actually get rid of this. No, I don't want to save it. So this, now let's actually look at our um, application. Um, this is going to give you a, a little bit more insight of horizontal partitioning. Um, so right now we're creating a database and right now we're adding some dogs into our database. And on line 10, we're just uh, finding a dog named Biscuit. On 911, we're gonna find all dogs that have the color orange. Now it's gonna return an array, so we're doing read operations on add and then i mean read write operations on add dog and then read operations by finding dog name or finding dog by a color and then finally we're gonna count to log biscuit so let's actually run this and see 
what's going on and note side note i did create a folder for this because we're doing a lot of things in this one horizontal partitioning that's the folder name and inside of that we have our index and db we'll be discussing this in a bit so let us actually run node dot oh no not that get me out of here so uh, i'm gonna cd into horizontal partitioning and then i'm gonna do no dot and right now we have biscuit we have our name biscuit and the color is orange and then we have orange dogs with an array with all the dogs that have orange name biscuit orange name peep and bread and they're all orange but another thing happened we have a data folder up here now and inside that we have all the dogs that we just called we have we have all the dogs basically um all the dogs we just saved right here so this data file just contains all of it contains all of the dogs that we just created by adding a dog so this is our uh i'm doing air quotes database okay so let's actually see what's going on on db.js so this is actually saving the data let me get rid of this so in db.js file we're using our local storage database on line three, we're telling a new instance of the local storage database to save it, its data under the data folder. On line five, we have a function that we can use to load all dogs. So this will read dogs from the database. On line seven, um, we have a function that we can use to check the data to see if a dog exists. And then last but not least, we have our functions add dog is going to check if we have a dog has dogs. If we have that dog already, then it's not going to add it to the data. But if we don't have it, it's going to add it to the data. Also, we have a find by name, which it loads dogs, which grabs all of the dogs and then uh, sees if we have that dog find by name and then it'll return uh, the dog's name. And then we have it find by color. I mean, yeah, find dog by color, which is still going to load all the dogs and then try to filter out the dog that we want. So this is our database. So what happens when we have so many dogs that they cannot be handled by a single database or a single file? Well, the answer is you already know is to create shards and hor horizontally partition our dog data. So we're going to make this change here in the DB because we don't want to change the way we don't want to change the, the way the users use the database. We we just want to change the way the data is stored in the database. That means that our index JS will stay the same, but it's going to be a little bit different in our db.js. So the first thing I'm going to do is literally create another database right here. And this is going to be database A. And this is going to be database B and A is in charge of all of the data A through M. And then B is in charge of the data M or N through Z. So now we've created two database instances. What we really need is a sharding function or a function that will tell us which database to use. So we're going to add a little function to determine which database to use. So down here, we're going to create a const, which I'm going to name it, oops, which DB. And we're going to set this equal to a name, a function. Sorry, we're going to set this equal to a function with name being passed in. And then we're going to determine if the name dot match we're going to use regular expression to see which what are we going to get so if it matches and we're going to um so what i'm trying to do right here is that we're going to create a regex expression that says that if the name is a through m then use the database a if it's n through z then use the database b all right so i'm not i'm not going over uh regular expressions because i'm pretty sure you should know this <clears throat> If you don't, then just research it. It's extremely easy to uh, figure out. So right here, I'm checking if it's A through M, capitalized A through M, or if it's lowercase A through M. <clears throat> if it's that, then what do we want to do? We want to set, 
set the uh, which DB variable to DBA, DBA, else it's going to be DBB. <clears throat> so now that we have that in place in line eight, we do need to modify this because right now it's just a function that will run all of the uh, that will run and grab all of the database. But now we don't know which database. So we need to pass in an argument DB to to figure out which database to get the dogs from. Now we do need to check. Uh, I mean, modify our has dogs because now we need to figure out if it which database has this dog. So instead of having a just a function, we are going to be passing an argument. So right here, load dogs, and we're going to pass in which DB, and we're going to pass in the name of that dog. So has dogs is going to take in a name with an argument of the name, and we're going to load all of the dogs in which DB, whatever DB comes back, A or B, with the name, and we're going to check if that has if that database has that dog. All that is left to do is actually modify our methods down here. So add dog, we're going to have to figure out which database it's coming from and then load the dogs from that database. So we're going to create another one right here. Let, and then we're going to say DB. We're, just, we're going to set that equal to which database. And we're going to pass in the argument of new dog name. Don't worry, guys. I will go over this one more time so that way you actually know what's going on. And right here, DB. We're gonna we're gonna get the dog uh, from the database we just grabbed, and we're gonna do the exact same thing for find dog by name, which we're gonna just pass in the name being passed in, and we're gonna load it from the DB and get rid of this. Now, find dogs by color. This is gonna be a little bit different because this needs to actually use both, both, both shards okay uh so what we're going to do here is actually get rid of all of this all together and we're going to return an array i'm going to just use the spread operator with load dogs and we're going to pass in dba and then we're going to do dot filter because we still need to filter by the color filter we're going to get a dog back dog and we, because we still need to filter by the color and we're going to do dog dot name dog dot name or not name color color sorry we're doing by color and we're going to see if it equals the color that we want from up here was being passed up here and what we're going to do is literally the exact same thing for b so i'm copy this Instead of A, it's going to be B. Now we should be getting both of the, uh, we're, we're grabbing the data from both uh, shards of A and B and finding the color of the dog from A and B. So let's actually go over it one more time because remember the, prob the problem was if there's too many data, what do we do? We create horizontal partitioning. So we created two of them, two shards, A database a and database b and right here we're just trying to figure out which database are we going to be grabbing from a or b and the way we're going to return uh determine that is by the name of the dog that's being passed in so if the name matches a through m then we're going to return database a if not then we're going to return database b now load dogs needs to take in the which which uh database it needs to load from which we get it from which DB is being passed in as an argument. So we're going to grab the database that we need and grab the dogs from that database. Now has dogs comes in by the name and which is in, we just need to load dogs from the database that has that name. And then down here, new dog, we need to grab the dog from the database or from the specific database that has that dog. So if, and like, again, we're going to determine that with, with which DB and passing in the name. And then we're going to load all the dogs from that name or from that database. Same for find dogs by name. And then this was this one down here was a little bit different because we needed to use both databases or both shards. So we just did a spread operator to grab all of that from DBA and also DBB. If you control save this now and then actually run it, new terminal. 
and then we're going to do uh, CD and then run it no dot so we're getting the exact same stuff uh, that's not that's not the uh, mind-boggling thing the mind-boggling is up here it created two more datas uh, databases data A through M and N through Z if we actually open one up we get all the names that are A through M so biscuit jungle fancy feast bread and then if you get N through Z we get smoky peep which we only have two so what's so neat about this or what we just did is that to the user it didn't really matter I actually interfaced with the database the exact same way but the database is handling the partitioning on the back end which becomes transparent in the index file so this is a simple sample simple example that was designed to demonstrate horizontal partitioning or sharding when in production i highly recommend using a real database obviously you don't want to be using local storage or any any little or a database you created you want to use a popular database that has all this functionality built into it so that was it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it uh i hope you learned something from it and uh leave a comment down below if you liked it leave a like if, if you liked it leave a comment down below on what i could have done better or anything anything really and also please subscribe if you haven't i really do appreciate your time that you spend watching my videos it really does mean a lot to me so thank you guys and gals when i say guys it means guys and gals so thank you all all <laughs> so i will see you in the next video bye